Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. D&D is a great way to spend time with your friends and tell a fun and fantastical story, and just escape the real world for a few hours. Though, sometimes, there can be players or DMs that can take things just a little too far, to the point that it can be borderline criminal, much like the subjects of these next D&D horror stories. But first, if you enjoy my videos, I ask that you like, comment, and subscribe, as it helps the channel grow and push it more out into the algorithm so more people can find it. But with that said, let's get right into the stories. My GM gave another player the ability to sexually assault my character at will. By Reddit user, Dissident Shitposter. The characters are as follows. Me, a bard player. The champion player, Tom. Alchemist player, Ralph. The GM, Mark. Not real names. This whole story takes place in Pathfinder 2nd Edition. We're running through a homebrew campaign written by Mark, and as we've been going through, there's been a pretty consistent trend of my character being on the receiving end of sexual harassment by NPCs, because bard life. When I brought this up to the GM, he always just laughed it off, and never really changed anything. I thought it peaked when some succubi took control of my character and raped them, while the party tried to stop it. This was weird, but I wasn't overly upset about this one incident, since as a player, I made the conscious decision to interact with them, knowing they were a succubi, and that horny would happen if I failed to save, even if I wasn't expecting him to actually RP it. But a few sessions later, he proved me wrong. We were exploring an ancient rune, where we came across the weak devil trapped inside a magical circle that seemed to be draining its power. We released it, and it revealed its true form to us. He was a powerful pit fiend. Skipping lore and other info dumps from the pit fiend, our alchemist was the one to release him, and so was rewarded. Ralph asked to resurrect Tom's character, as they had been slain in the fight right before we entered this room. Now, before we continue with what happened next, I should give some background info about the relationship between my bard and the champion. My bard was from Andoran, and an ex-eagle knight, and the champion was from Chiliax, and was a hell knight. The basics of this meant that they came from nations that hated each other, and were essentially in a Cold War state. This naturally led to the two of them not getting along, leading to a lot of insults between the two but anything that occurred was always in good fun out of character. One of my favorites being in reference to a situation where the Hell Knight took part in a play, where he was forced to wear a pink dress. This led to my bard constantly acting overly supportive of him, and informing Tom's character that he would buy them a replica the next chance we got. Back to the story. Tom is resurrected. He and Ralph swear loyalty to the devil and agree to work under him and Tom's armor begins glowing and looking evil AF. The usual. He then tells them what their mission will be from him, and the one that upsets my character was when he mentioned toppling enemies of Chiliax, since this would include his home of Andoran. After that had finished, the devil asks if that will be all, and I know I probably brought some reckoning on myself by saying this, but oh well. So my character said, quote, Tom's armor doesn't really suit him, Maybe you should try a pink dress. The devil responds by looking at me, and then to Tom. Me, then Tom. Me, then Tom. Then he waves his hand, and suddenly Tom has a new power. Once a day, when Tom says my name in an authoritative tone, my character will be magically forced into a bondage suit and have a random BDSM effect applied to them. Some lovely examples my GM gave were... Quote, getting covered in hot candle wax or having cigarettes burn my nipples. The session ended after that, and I was upset, but Mark didn't seem to understand why. I will say before the story ends that Tom, as a player, has been really understanding and has told me out of character that he wouldn't use this, but that doesn't really change the fundamental issue that my DM has essentially just given his character the ability to sexually assault my character once a day for free. TLDR I annoyed a devil, so my GM gave another player 
a sexual assault button for my character. Edit. So, thanks for your support, everyone. I probably should have specified in the original post, but this incident was a few months ago. I have since left the campaign because it was this campaign, as well as other incidents. Also, one or two people seem to assume that I was female. I am not. I am in fact male. It doesn't really change much, since this behavior is never acceptable. Having a rivalry between characters in game can always be pretty fun when done well, and perhaps the DM was just trying to help that dynamic a bit, though this is not the way to do it. Introducing a mechanic like this in the game to give one player power over another player's agency is just plain wrong, not to mention the theme of said mechanic. It's good to hear that Tom said that he wouldn't use this power, but I think the player should have a little chat with the DM about boundaries. So, what do you think? On to the next story. Player tried to drug my girlfriend's character. By Reddit user, AggravatingBoot2930. For context, this is quite recent. As in just happened a few weeks ago, recent. COVID isn't raging in my area, so me and my friends arranged to have our first in-person session of the campaign, which has been going on for four to five months now. The only people who really matter in the story is Rose, who I've been dating for five years, and the toxic player, Jared. Both fake names. And of course the DM, who will just be DM. Jared's a relatively new player, and this is his first big campaign. He is very, very edgy, as he is a tabaxi rogue who acted like Shadow the Hedgehog. We'd offer him food, and he'd be like, quote, why would you care enough about me to feed me? The party and the DM were cringing internally whenever he did something like this. But, oh well, it's his character, he can play it how he wants, and it's not ruining the game, so we didn't say anything. He'd been a little flirty towards Rose's character, who was established to be dating my character. It wasn't like a big part of the campaign, as we weren't overly flirty. It was just kind of a thing we all knew. Anyways, she always just laughed it off and said, quote, Sorry, I'm dating OP's character. And he'd just shrug. Our party was celebrating after a hard boss fight, and we were about to take a quick snack and coffee break. That was until Jared had his character put something in Rose's character's drink. We were all immediately like, What the fuck, dude? And the DM just gives him a look of, Seriously? I quickly say that I noticed what he puts in Rose's drink and the DM has me roll to see if I notice. I've never been more relieved to roll a 17. So, my character confronts his and dumps Rose's drink into the sink. Since none of the other in-universe characters noticed, they all ask why I did that, and Jared jumps in with, quote, She put something in Rose's drink and was trying to hide it. Shitty excuse. We all knew what he did. Luckily, the DM said that the burly bartender noticed and kicked Jared's character out, while we all continued the party. Jared spent the rest of the campaign sulking, and the entire party just silently agreed to keep Rose and our other female player away from him. We played for a few more hours, and for those hours, someone would always butt in if he tried to speak to them, or they'd just ignore him. Not the most climatic story, I know, but I think from now on, I'm checking me and my girlfriend's drinks whenever we're playing with him, which is in about a week. TLDR Edgy cat boy tried to put something in my girlfriend's character's drink. I stepped in and he tried to blame it on me. The party no longer trusts him. Edit. Oh wow, this got more popular than I expected. And sorry that this is late, as I don't use Reddit much. After reading some comments, I messaged the entire group and we all agreed that we don't want him in the campaign anymore. The DM messaged him and made it very clear why he's not allowed back. We came up with a story that the party covered him in bacon and left him in an area heavily populated by wolves. That is some creepy ass behavior. This makes me think back to another story I read on this channel, where another player did something similar, only to try to take it out of the game and do it in real life. Thankfully, in that story, a friend stepped in before anything sinister could happen. I am of the mind that if someone tries to do something like this to someone's character in D&D, 
they may be harboring some thoughts of doing that in real life. I know that might not always be the case, but I think OP had the right idea to keep watch on his girlfriend's drinks around that player. Thankfully though, it sounds like he doesn't have to. As the group kicked out Jared before they would ever be able to find out if he would ever try something like that in real life. Hopefully, it was just a case of Jared being awkward and not actually wanting to do that to someone. Though, with that said, let's move on to the last story. DM's close friend turns out to have groomed her. By Reddit user, OKAction3370. So, this is the story of a close and beloved friend of our DMing group, turning out to be a horrible person, and the red flags he left along the way. I'm going to avoid any super specifics, as I do not wish the docs, or harm anyone involved. I apologize for the rushed grammar. I needed to get this off my chest, and put this out there. The cast. DM, a younger woman, 16, at the start of this story. Me, a close friend of the DM, and a member of her chosen family. Jack, another close friend of the DM, met through a D&D Discord server a few years prior. Josh, the DM's best friend and group favorite. Sheep, a friend of the DM, since the start of the server. Bastard, a close friend and father figure to the DM. The name makes more sense in character. Now for some context. We had played several times leading up to this event, with minimal and normal warning signs. Me, Bastard, Sheep, and DM were the first members of this small posse, with Jack and Josh joining around the same time a year later, forming what's become our regular game group. The dynamic has always stayed the same. We were the players, and DM was the DM. It rarely strayed from this dynamic, as we had no desire to do otherwise, aside from one-shots and side campaigns run for fun. DM was the regular. It's important to mention a key thing to the story. DM has gone through some very horrific events in their life, mostly involving their parents, leading to trust being a very difficult thing to obtain. But slowly and surely, that wall fell for us, and we became a pseudo-family, no one wishing harm upon anyone else in the group aside from the occasional petty drama. The first game ever played showed no warning signs of who Bastard was. We were all getting to know each other, and we bonded quickly through the grueling trek that was that campaign. The only thing of note being that Bastard was very harsh on me whenever my character made a mistake in game, telling me I was, quote, not playing the character I wrote. On to the second game. Josh and Jack had joined the group. Sheep couldn't join. This is where the warning signs started. We all rolled up the usual D&D party. Josh played a frivolous royal bard. Jack played a mighty evil paladin heir. I played a sneaky rogue with a hidden past. And some others played an orc cleric and a succubus sorcerer. And Bastard played a perverted goblin. Aside from the classic pervy shenanigans of harassing female NPCs and making the succubus his smut supplier, everything is fine with the occasional derailment to let Bastard chase some tail. Nothing new. We progress through the story, Josh's character slowly descending into the realization that the real world is cruel, Jack's character became more of a hero instead of a villain, and my character died and I replaced him with, well, another sneaky rogue. Point is, we all developed. Except Bastard. He stayed a pervy, twisted goblin until the DM introduced us to what was soon to be our favorite NPC of the campaign, Issa. Issa was an almost self-insert NPC of the DM's part, as she was the DM's first character ever made and resembled DM to a fair degree appearance-wise. I want to make clear, Issa did not pull the classic DMPC BS. She was kind, goofy, and all around a great tag-along for the party, as she brought a certain light to the trauma-filled adventures. Bastard's character immediately started hitting on, groping, and harassing Issa, and stating all the while that it was in character. This made everyone understandably uncomfortable, to the point where, whenever him harassing Issa came up, it was brushed off as a, oh yeah, that happened, yada yada. The game goes on. It comes to a close due to DM not feeling driven to run it. At the time, we assumed it was because of work, or fatigue. How wrong we were, haunts me. I'm going to mention something that makes this a lot worse. 
I probably should have mentioned it earlier. Bastard was 40. We were all late teens, early 20s. DM was 16, mature for her age, but 16. Bastard insisted that the DM call him dad, which she did, because he was a father figure to her at the time. All of us found it a little weird, but we brushed it off thinking that he was good for her. A few weeks later, DM offered us another campaign, a western style shoot 'em up with a heavy undertone of magical elitism. Sounds fun, we all say. I roll up a paladin, Josh rolls up a sniper, Jack rolls up a medic, and Sheep rolls up a priest. Bastard rolls up a fighter tank with a kink for pain. All good. This is a game themed around despicable people, we all figure. A few weeks go by, and we all start to notice that Bastard's character, nicknamed Bastard, is very similar to DM. Same mannerisms, same aesthetic, same attitude, though we don't think much of it at the time. Months go on, and as the game progresses, we all start to learn what our characters, darker sides, and past are like. But one thing sticks out. Bastard's character's backstory is a copy-paste of what has happened to DM. Not one traumatic event missed, all of it. This struck us as a little bit weird, not to mention how distant DM had gotten in the past few weeks, often avoiding hanging out on call and seeming detached during the sessions. So we started to wonder what was up. We asked her about it and DM brushed it off, saying something along the lines of, that's just Bastard. During our daily hangouts after sessions, Bastard would critique our characters, playing the position of the master writer and a character-creating genius, even going as far as to tell Jack that he was only playing the medic to pretend he knew what trauma was. Whatever the excuse was, Bastard always made it a point to pick on DM's close male friends, never the girls. Cut forward about five months. D&D was put on pause, and we hadn't played for two months. DM was quiet during the duration, her usual spark and energy gone. We get progressively worried about what's going on, and eventually, after hours of asking her what was wrong, she tells us. In the background of all of our games and hangouts for the past three years, Bastard had been sending DM money to help her get by on rent. We all knew this to some degree. What we didn't know is that Bastard had been using this money to guilt trip and persuade DM into feeding his horrendous and despicable habits. Like asking for photos, drawings, and countless other lewd and pedophilic activities. Sadly, none of what he did was illegal, as he had waited till she had turned 18 to ask for these things. He even wrote her borderline novels detailing people in our friend group dancing with her. She told us this as she cried over not wanting to cause any issues, so we confronted him. When we did, he admitted to what had happened. The long hours of coaxing her for pictures, the years of reinforcing that DM owed him something, the disturbing dance fanfictions, all of it. For three long years, we had let this man, this bastard, manipulate, harass, and groom our close friend right under our noses. And I speak for all of us when I say we saw Red. He was banned, blocked, and completely cut out, and was told if we ever saw his face again, we would give what we had to the police. She was never able to revive either game, as he had tainted her years of work with his touch and perverted her hobbies. She went to therapy, got help, and was able to process what happened and how it wasn't her fault. And we slowly but surely made our way back into playing D&D. But there's always an underlying bitterness to the games. I cut this down a lot and left out a lot of details including other campaigns and activities, to ensure no one but the people involved will know who I'm talking about, as quite a few of those stories would be a dead giveaway as to our identities. At the end of the day, if you see this bastard, never do that shit again. You were never our friend, and you sucked at D&D. Edit. Because so many people keep saying this, I felt the need to put this in. I am not going to report this to the cops. That is completely on DM's discretion, and she has stated she has no desire to on multiple occasions. We are helping her. She is safe and cared for as of this current moment. Wow. Talk about creepy predatory behavior. Made all the worse by the age gap. It's one thing to help someone in need. 
that alone can be quite admirable. But that all goes out the window when you start to leverage that over the person being helped for returned favors, especially when those favors are as creepy and evil like what Bastard demanded. Also, the story just goes to show that, yet again, the way a person presents themselves on the outside may not reflect what is going on on the inside. I'm glad to hear that DM finally chose to tell everyone what was going on, and that they helped her get away from the situation. And if any of you watching are going through something similar, please talk to someone you trust about it. There is always a way out of a bad situation. Anyway, that will do it for today's episode. If you have a story that you would like to be read on the channel, be sure to post it in the comments, on the channel subreddit, r slash doge, or even just DM me on Twitter. And as always, I appreciate all of you, and hope you never have to deal with DMs or players like the ones in this video. Until next time.